All right. Well, well, we got this open. We have a very, very exciting topic to talk about. I don't think anybody knows about this right now, except for maybe the people in that one Discord that you shared this in, because it's not on any of the Unity documentation, not in any of the change logs I've seen, not in the API documentation. It's, oh, it's okay. not anywhere. Yeah, no, I don't know what, what it is. <laughs> it's not anywhere. You do know what yeah. it is. We talked about this before. Yes. Entity ID. Yeah. So, yeah, if you can see, we are in a uh, Unity version 6002, excuse me, version 6000.2. <laughs> um <laughs> it's the uh the new beta version um on unity engine objects you can now do dot get entity id and this returns an entity id type danny explain explain what this is all about yeah so um normally every game object in unity has this thing called an instance id and it's just a normal thing you can get uh, from a game object directly. So if you do game object dot get instance ID, what is returned here is something called an integer. Capital uh, I, capital D on that one. Yep, yeah, exactly. Um, so this has been in Unity since forever and it's always been an integer. The main gist of that problem is that it's always been an integer. And so people store it as an integer in their entire code base, a bunch of different integers can either mean that they are storing like user data or they are storing an instance ID or they are sometimes storing a, a their own little version of an ID and it's not actually an instance ID. So there's a lot of code out there where it's very ambivalent whether an integer means an instance ID or it's something else entirely. And so let's just not use an integer. The problem is, it's very hard to change such a fundamental part of Unity. <laughs> it's a very, very fundamental part of Unity because yeah, what an instance... probably very deep inside the source code used in a lot of places. Especially in the editor and asset store packages. Oh, and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it, it's a way to go from an integer directly to the runtime created object. You can do... Um, there's, there's three different ways you can go from an instance ID to the object. Um, it's editor utility dot instance ID to object. It is resources dot instance ID to object, and it is um, game object dot bind object from uh, entity ID uh, instance ID. Sorry. Um, and so all of those are ways to go from the instance ID, which is an integer, uh, directly to the object. And so a lot of editor code does that. Um, so, okay, getting rid of this mistake, this very old mistake is very hard. <laughs> but one thing we can do is we can create a new thing called an entity ID. And oh, actually I should pre-state uh, what why we need to change this. So um, the reason that we need to change it is because we're making it so that every game object underlyingly has an entity. Um, now, how big is an entity? Turbo, do you know? Uh, you have a, uh, I've seen eight bytes because you have four for the index and four for the version. Yep. And therefore we need uh, the integer to be bigger and it can't just be an integer. It needs to be, you know, the size of a U-long. Um, and so, you know, we could go around changing everything to U-long and that's a problem uh, because of the reason I just stated. But anyways, um, instead what we've chosen to do is we've created a new type called an entity ID and that is what we want people to be storing everywhere. It's called an entity ID because um, it's a merger of an instance ID and an entity. It initially won't actually be an entity. And so it won't be, you know, a valid entity that you can, uh, you know, see if it has chunks on or allocate chunks to, etc. It's just right now it's an instance ID. It's still four bytes. If you look, it's it's an integer. Yeah, I just saw it's yeah, just an integer is the M data. Yeah, it's still an integer. So it's still four bytes. But the uh, plan is that we are gonna change this. This is gonna change to 64 uh, bits. Not in this version, but in some future version. We'll see which version that will be. <laughs> we will probably have to do a huge announcement when that happens. Six thousand and three. Uh, because it is somewhat of a breaking change. Um, and we might not even be in Unity 6 by that point, but 
right now all of that is uh, sort of up in the air. It's a, that's a question <laughs> and a half. Um, in either case, it means that uh, we want people to be using this type everywhere in your code where you store an instance ID. Ideally, you should store an entity ID instead. One of the things we are doing to make it easier for you to do that is that we have an implicit cast from int to entity ID back and forth. At some point, that implicit cast will disappear um, as well. Yeah, this so, instance ID right here. Yeah, the, um, yeah that implicit it, cast will be deprecated at some point because yeah, we don't I did want see this to rely is on it. Already marked obsolete. Please use entity ID instead. Yeah, that's an instance ID. So we, we created a type for the instance ID. That's just a wrapper. Yeah, I was curious because yeah, the w you know we just looked at the instance ID that you get, and it's just that int thirty two. But then yeah, so this there is, is an just... instance ID type, but the instance ID type is just for us wrapping it internally. We're not actually using that. We are using the entity ID. The entity ID has an implicit cast between entity ID and int. Uh, if you look at uh, like line 59 and 61. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that one converts between the two. And we okay. use those conversions because um, uh, just to, to make it easier on users to upgrade in their project. At some point, we will have to obsolete those as well because, again, people shouldn't be storing integers and entity IDs as like a, an implicit fi thing between the two because at some point, you can't just cast between the two because one of them will be bigger than the other one, right? So you will lose information by casting one way to the other way. And we don't want that. That's an unsafe sort of thing to do. Um, but right now, we're just making it easier for everyone. Uh, so yeah. Uh, but it also means that every single, it, like it's not just that there's a get entity ID on game objects. It's also that we have to go out in uh, the entire code base and make sure that every single call that takes in an instance ID now can pass in an entity ID directly instead. <laughs> and that we obsolete the uh, version that takes in an integer. <laughs> Which <laughs> there is so, so many APIs in our code base that does yeah, I was, that. I was going to ask, like, do you have like a count somewhere of like, have you, have you like scanned the code base to see how many? instances no. you're going to have to update. No, no, but I know that just like uh, uh, one of the bigger changes, uh, ironically speaking, is just tree view. Um, now, I don't know if it's in the version that you're currently on. It is definitely in 6.2. Um, this so this it, one is uh, 6.2. Yeah, but uh, we, we had a bit of a weird release scheduling thing going on with the tree view stuff. Mm. So uh, could you try looking at tree view and seeing if there's a generic version of a tree view. Just search tree view directly from here. Okay. I'm and UI some, elements. Yeah, um, the um, GUI version. Go to that one. Yeah, okay. This this does have the new one. Um, so you can see the tree view type is now obsolete. And so what a tree view in Unity is, is the, um, it's the scene hierarchy, it's the project browser, it's the audio mixer, it's every time that you have like a hierarchy of things, that's a tree view. And the problem is a lot of the time, the tree views inside of the editors happens to store, uh, for every row, it has to store an, uh, a unique identifier. That unique identifier directly overlaps uh, with instance IDs, like, 90% of the time inside of the editor, um, but not a lot in user code uh, and packages and so on. Uh, so so it, it kind of creates this problem where a lot of people don't actually need to upgrade to the new thing, um, but we do internally have to update the new thing and we don't want to end up having two different tree views. So what we ended up deciding is we created a generic tree view and the generic tree view then can, you like the user, is able to implement the int version of uh, to, to keep the unique identifiers just being an int, while um, we internally can start using the instance ID version uh, or the entity ID version, I suppose, but uh, the actual typed version. And then for the users that actually do also happen to be in the same problem that we are, that they need to store a unique identifier of entity IDs, 
um, well, then they can also use that generic uh, tree view of entity ID. Um, so it, it sort of creates this case where, OK, we um, have to deprecate a type that everyone uses. There is internally, just in the Unity code base alone, 34 usages of tree view. This does not include uh, Unity packages, and it does not include asset store packages that are using tree view. <laughs> That is just Unity alone. Um, so, you know, it's 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 the case where it's very, very hard to do a simple, simple little change just because we have so many usages of it. Yeah. But what it enables us to do is as soon as we've turned all of the tree views into entity ID tree views, then all of a sudden now we know uh, all of those tree views, which APIs they are using. And so we can start finding more holes that we can create public API with entity ID for. Because a lot of the time, we are using the same API internally as people are externally. And at some point, we have to punch through. Um, it's all very confusing. But it, in, in the end, what we're trying to get at is we're trying to get to a point where people don't really have a way of getting an integer for their instance IDs. And they don't really have a way of well, they, they don't have a case where they can't go from uh, the entity ID to whatever they need with the entity ID, right? Like they, they, they can store the entity ID as what they need. Just rewrite the engine at this point. <laughs> we tried that and, uh, you know, that didn't go so well. I think people have heard of this project called Project Tiny. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a Dutch project of all things. Yeah, that was cool. I sadly never uh, got to dive into that too much, but it was a, yeah. it was a cool little initiative. A lot of pe Dutch people still think so. Uh, it is a cool initiative. It is just you know it's very hard to convince anyone that that's a good idea for yeah. obvious reasons. And I mean, uh, I feel like anything that you make with Unity dots and ECS right now is going to run fantastic on like just a regular phone that most people have. So it's like yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and I mean, right now we're doing kind of the opposite. We are instead, we are <laughs> kind of rewriting the the engine instead. Right? <laughs> um, it's just a little... We're not rewriting the engine, we're rewriting the engine. But, but I mean, I, I think the important part here is like, what we're trying to do is we we know what we wh where we want to be. And we also try to put in a path for people to upgrade from that path, right? Because there... Obviously, there's no reason that we couldn't just internally change everything over to entity ID and call it a done deal, right? The, the, the actual part of the difficulty here is that we have existing customers, like existing users uh, that, you know, have code that lives and they would probably want to upgrade at some point. Yeah. Uh, so let's create an upgrade path for them. It's not that much extra when we know the, the way right. to do it. It's just, you're kind of just, massaging some of the types a little bit and yeah yeah and and you know the the thing is for a lot of this it's just been you know people have been too scared to touch any of this for a while it's not like it's actually impossible it's just people have been you know, yeah I, I get it i mean it's <laughs> i mean you're literally talking about the problem right now about you know how many people are affected by this and it's like yeah if yeah. you change this it's like it has so many of these knockdown effects but um, you know, glad that you guys are actually doing it as opposed to like, you know, so many other companies where just their legacy code base just keeps growing and growing and growing until it becomes this like total mess that's like not even fixable. <laughs> yes, yes. Looking at you, Visual Studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, that's, I mean, that's, that's literally, you know, talking about rewrite the engine. That's like pretty much what they did with VS Code, right? <laughs> just make a new editor. <laughs> 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 yeah, and now everyone's using that instead. That's uh, yeah. yeah. Um, so I mean, does that even mean that like packages that have like literally not even been updated in years but are still like supported by Unity, like those are all gonna have to like get new updates for them? Uh, yes and no. I mean the, the 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 thing here is obviously we are just obsoleting things. We're not actually, you know, removing things right now. I mean they will they will in a future version, uh, when we are allowed, 
it's uh, and feel safe that you know enough, enough users have migrated you never know what the next version <laughs> number is right <laughs> so um the, the the thing is when we are confident that we can just like remove it we're going to do that and and we will probably do it before we are confident because the, the thing is we we do have to do some of that at this point uh, because we can't just allow old code to live just because uh, it lives it, it's it's so so like it's more about like creating a very easy upgrade path for users they sort of have to upgrade fast um but there is a version for them like as long as you go from six to, uh six zero six to six one to six two you should have an easy upgrade workflow the entire way through there should be no path where that is not just like a direct, you know exactly what to do. Like um, because you kind of get all those obsolete warnings and everything, like you're exactly. never yeah. Yeah, gonna yeah. There's... be getting any like crazy breaking changes. Yeah, exactly. So I think uh, that like would it... be something important for Unity to point out because like the versioning is a little bit weird how like yes. 6.0 is LTS, but 6.1 is not, but it's called supported, but then 6.4 is LTS now or something. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that would be very important for you guys to get the messaging right on. Yes, no, I, I, I completely agree. Um, but I mean, that it, it is kind of the point of the whole like migration plan is, is that, you know, people can incrementally move over and we support them in doing so in that way. Um, but it's, it's, it's very hard for us to say, no, uh, we can't uh, just, we can't change things. Um, we, we just have to be really good at how we change things and what sort of things we're changing. And, you know, in that way, we are not stopped from changing things, but we're still, you know, doing it. 